Tips for the Branle Anglaise. Okay, we start with our second finger on the A and our first finger on the C. Set up just like that. Um, you can put your first finger down because it's going to be the next note you need. And then the index is going to play on the right hand. Shift for the F sharp. And then shift back and make sure that I, M, and A are playing balanced and equal sound for all those notes. Now in this measure, you have a D, but in between you have an E, but you come back to the D. So get into the habit of releasing the pressure from the fourth finger without taking it away, like without taking it totally away. So you want, as soon as you play that E, you just release the pressure on your fourth finger. Okay, so this is, you know, for two reasons. One is because it's good to get into the habit of relaxing fingers that you don't need, but also not making them completely leave if you're coming right back to them. But also, in this case, we don't want what's called campanella, which is the two notes ringing out kind of over each other. Okay, so you don't want that D to ring out while that E is playing. In some pieces, Campanella is really pretty and you want to do it, but in this particular case, we're not doing it. So release the pressure of your fourth finger without taking it away. So. And then we have a, the E, the A to the G sharp. We're keeping our second finger on the E. And then putting our third finger back down on the A. Same thing, I'm releasing the pressure of the E here without taking my finger totally away like this, okay? And I don't want to keep pressing it because we don't need that note on beat three. Okay, beat measure five. Basically, from measure five to measure eight, we're just doing the same thing twice. So you can either do um, a, a variation with how loud you play it. Maybe you can come back the second time and... quiet or you can change timbre you can go back and do maybe a ponticello which is I don't know it's it's a little bit outdated but you can still do it especially if you do ponticello when you play quietly because um, it does make the sound pop a little bit When you go back and play ponticello and you play quietly, you don't lose the clarity and the definition of the sound. So that could be one thing. But to play it at the same temp at the same volume and ponticello, ponticello is a little bit dated sounding now. Um, okay, now we're at measure nine. Okay, you want a nice um, thumb index on the third string and the fourth finger on the second string. Or M, M, sorry, M, so P, I, M. And your le left hand is making that nice spread between six and two. Okay, so. Now you can also do a roll here. Sounds really pretty. Now as you do this next note, the F sharp with your second finger, you have to keep your third finger on the C. You can release the first finger off of the C, just the pressure, okay? Because we don't need that note on beat two, and if it helps you a little bit to get the F sharp, you can release the pressure here. First finger comes over the top and fourth finger. And then we shift position again. And now we're gonna repeat the same thing twice. Oops, sorry, that's an A bass here. So there's a lot of repetition in the piece. So once you get, say, the first line down, 
then you've also have learned the second line and the fourth line. Um, well, the third and the fourth line are the same. The first and the second line are the same. So you really only have to learn half the piece to get all of the piece. So that's nice about the repetition in this piece. So I hope you found those, those little tips helpful. And I'll see you on the next lesson.